we all grieve and most often this is for loved ones who've passed away but we also grieve for objects my phone died bodily injuries or losses my nail broke my barber took too much off the top <laughs> and for our mental health i'm losing my mind i've experienced perhaps more than my fair share of the loss of loved ones including one of my sisters so i'm kind of intimate with this grieving process but somehow it always takes me by surprise it takes time for us to fully realize the absence of the deceased loved one and the shock of loss can delay the grieving period and we feel pressure to move on partly due to the externally visible signs of sadness crying being the most obvious one uh, feeling for the most part socially unacceptable but we need to permit ourselves to grieve as much as we need to find ways to channel this grief itself. And I find music is the best outlet for grief. So I have the privilege of being able to make music. And by that I mean, I've been taught how to read music, I've been practicing, as in learning the notes, as well as performing regularly my whole life. And I've got the confidence and support to continue to do so. So I've been nurtured by my parents. My dad is a classical musician. He's primarily a violinist from Barbados. And I've nurtured myself. I taught myself theremin, this instrument here, uh, which I'll be performing on in a bit. And I also conduct the orchestra that I founded, Peckham Chamber Orchestra, which allows me to be part of collective music making in contrast to my solo performances. And uh, all this might sound like I'm just showing off about all the ways I to make music, but I've got a point. Um, <laughs> yeah, music and its performance is inherently communal because you can't have a performance without an audience. It cannot exist without this audience. Your presence, the audience's presence, is essential to creating the unique moment, the unique moment, sorry, the only moment in which performance truly exists. So despite the unprecedented advancement in smartphones, so we've all got video cameras in our pockets, um, this might even be live streamed. Despite that, there's nothing quite like being present, both physically and mentally, at a performance. And the intensity of live performance can be overwhelming. I'm thinking of the way fans scream, you know, historically Michael Jackson, the Beatles, um, <coughs> even to the point of passing out, um, and also how people weep at the opera. Um, but recorded music also has the ability to produce this kind of affect on us. And I know when I want to cry, or I'm already crying, and I'm in for a bit of a session, there's a few <laughs> go-to tracks. Um, yeah, soundtrack for this emotional release. Uh, Jacqueline Dupre performing Elgar's Cello Concerto, conducted by her partner, Daniel Barenboy. And it's a specific video on YouTube, it's black and white, from a performance from 1967. And this performance, this documented performance, I should say, is retrospectively infused with the tragedy of Jacqueline Dupre's premature death at the age of 42. She battled with multiple sclerosis. Um, Baron Boehm and Dupre's love for one another is so present in the way that they interact as performers. Neither of them are reading music, they're looking into each other's eyes. And it's as though this unknown tragic future of Jackie's death is present in the bittersweet melody of Elgar's epic work. And this undeniably intensifies that entire thing. It's what, it's what we know as well is going to happen. Uh, some of my favorite other sorrowful soundtracks include Billy Holiday's Gloomy Sunday, Chris Isaac's Wicked Game, and also Boys to Men, The End of the Road, which I remember listening to really a lot as a child. In the film. Um, but the point is, music flows through us, through memory, through presence, through the presence of memory and the memory of presence, and perhaps most potently, through the human voice in song. So historically, particularly in ancient Greece, the human voice in song was believed to connect the man with gods and that singing could transcend time and space and mortality. And this would ultimately establish harmony in the universe. Being moved, means, being moved means being touched by something, but music itself is intangible. 
one good thing about music, when it hits you, you feel no pain. Bob Marley said that. Uh, listening to music provides mental space and time for us to contemplate and to reflect. And music transfigures suffering into joy. And we couldn't have suffering without joy, and we couldn't have joy without suffering. But I'll end my speaking part by contemplating collective grief. And perhaps we felt more of this this year, an awful year for many reasons, but we've lost an abnormally high number of high profile artists. Prince, Bowie, Fike Dog, amongst many others. And the world has been united through grieving for these gifted musicians. And we've been, we've been united through their music whilst they were alive, and we continue to connect through their music now that they're dead. And this was particularly potent in the initial grieving process when we were finding out. So in this current bleak global socio-political climate, race relations are far from harmonious, to the point that we're regularly grieving for innocent individuals. At times, I find the now unfortunately expected fatalities of black subjects through police brutality overwhelmingly traumatic. And we need to grieve these losses, both individually and collectively, or at least to realize that we are grieving together, both for individuals and for collective traumas. I'm going to perform a lament for a much lesser known figure, Busser. Busser instigated the largest slave revolt in Barbados in 1816. This was followed by two more large scale rebellions in Demerara in 1823 and Jamaica in 1832. And the Busser eman emancipation statue is a, is a landmark in Barbados, though few people outside of, outside of Barbados know anything about it. So I realize this urgency to give more attention to Busser as I continue to decolonize my own mind and as I constantly struggle to express myself through words. So my sonic lament for Busser says so much more than I could attempt to explain through words alone. So yeah, this instrument here, theremin, is totally unique amongst all instruments in that you do not touch it to make a sound. And I think this performed intangibility relates to the way in which we feel. So, you know, emotions cannot be grasped, or even easily defined verbally. And mental pain does not and cannot be grasped. So the mystical theremin for me is my outlet. I improvise, I four-channel my grief into the airwaves. So I'll perform them. <laughs> 